My name is Erin Slater. I'm the Director of Admissions here at Randolph-Macon, and I am so incredibly excited to be here with you all tonight and talk a little bit more about the college application process pertaining to Randolph-Macon. Um, we will go over some general facts as well, just a little helpful tips to get through the application process. Um, I have two special presenters on with me tonight. Um, Dean Lassane is going to pop back on to add tips and tricks that he has learned over the years. And then our Dean of Students, Dr. Grant Asdell is here with me as well. And he's going to um, have some tips because we could not do this without acknowledging that there is a global pandemic happening at the end. These are unprecedented times. So we wanna talk about the application in relation to that and then help you understand a little bit more about what our campus is like and that is what Dean Asdell is going to provide. So um, both gentlemen are on with me, but first and foremost, I actually wanna ask you all a question and it's really hard over webinar to do that, but I'm going to launch a poll right now because I'd love to know before we start, how are you feeling about applying to college? Yeah, so the options are excited, pretty good, or not sure yet. No idea, haven't decided how I feel, and that's okay too. All of there is no wrong answer. Um, I just want to get a sense of how you're feeling and, and really where we should take this conversation. Okay, so just a few more seconds. Okay, here you go, and I'm going to share those results with you. So most of you are pretty excited or feeling pretty good about this. I like to see that I'm excited for you. I'm excited that we're going to talk about applying to college. Um, I might be, along with these two gentlemen, one of the only you know ones who are really, really jazzed about applying to college. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that we can um, talk more. Okay. So first and foremost, I want to talk about ways in which you can apply to Randolph-Macon. And I saw a few questions happening in the Q&A. Um, we only have about 20 minutes with each other. Um, and then I want to leave time for Dean Asdale. So please, in the Q&A, just throw in any questions. I will try to answer them live if I can so that um, your peers can hear what the answers are because likely if you are asking those questions, other people have them too. And I wanna be sure that we address this. So really there are two ways to apply to Randolph-Macon and it is free to apply. I saw that question come through a handful of times and I wanna be sure that you know that either way in which you apply, either the Randolph-Macon application, and you can find that at the website listed here, or the common application. So if you have already filled out the common application or are planning on filling out the common application, we also accept the common app. Um, I actually really love it. I know that there are people who don't, and I'm sorry if you're one of them, um, stay strong, hit save, work on it a little bit at a time. You really can find your stride, I, I promise, um, and get a little bit done each night so that it's not so overwhelming. So either one is acceptable. We are completely fine either way. I will say too that I wanted to list and make sure that you knew before you started that our deadline dates for first year admissions, a freshman admission, we do not have early decision, which is the binding round, but we do have early action, which is non-binding and regular decision. So early action for Randolph-Macon is November 15th. I will say that there are other schools in Virginia, there are other schools in Maryland, there are other schools in Oregon that have early action and regular decision application rounds as well. And I want to be sure that everybody knows that just because we all call it the same name does not necessarily mean that it is the same date. Uh, I had a student two years ago, I will never forget him, and I'm sorry if this story is dated or folks have heard this before, I just think it's kind of crazy that he missed a deadline date for another institution, and so he called me and he decided to tell me that, Mrs. Slater, it's your fault that I missed this to which I was completely flabbergasted. I had no idea why he uh, blamed me for him missing his application date. He, he then went on to explain that he missed it because 
the early action date for Randolph Macon was November 15th, and he just thought all early action dates were November 15th, when in reality, the other deadline date was November 1st. So please just pay attention to deadline dates when you go to apply, even if they're called early action or regular decision. Um, for us, should you apply under the early action round, so you're getting ready to do that um, around this time, we'll talk about everything that goes in, the or in your application, excuse me, next. Um, so you're going about that pretty soon. You're getting ready, your transcripts are coming, you're requesting um, letters of recommendation. So that soon, should your application be complete, we ask that it's done by December 1st, so complete by December 1st, we will get a decision to you by January 1. So for regular decision, that's a March 1st deadline date for us. And so we ask that your application is complete shortly after that for an April 1st decision at latest. And so that's the timeline that Randolph-Macon is working on. If you're a transfer student who has joined us tonight, our spring and fall deadline dates, because you can join us in the spring and you can join us in the fall. So December 1st and June 1st for that. And usually with transfers, if your application is complete, we are able to get you a decision within two weeks of that. Uh, David, anything you'd like to add here? No, I mean, I think you hit it really well. Um, you know, we're probably in some ways preaching to the choir of this group. You're here at a, at a program in, in early October, so hopefully you're ready. And I think there's uh, full advantage um, in terms of response if you can just try to target that uh, early action um, yeah. line and just go ahead and get that application in. Yeah. Um, there's no fee. Uh, maybe we're, we're getting to that. Um, but um, yeah, nothing venture, nothing gain. So uh, I'd encourage yeah. you to. To, to, you got time. Beautiful. So what are we looking for on the application? So when the counselors who I hope you will join tonight in their rooms and you've got to meet a few of our amazing counselors, um, they're reading your application. And so what we are looking for at bare minimum are the items listed on your screen. So the high school transcript, your courses and your grades. When I say to you that we look at your courses through all four years of high school, not just your senior year and not just that last semester in your junior year or just your junior year, all four years, guys. So we wanna make sure that if there was a rocky start to high school, you've got an upward trend and you're doing really well and you hit your stride. Or if you are worried about junior year, that second semester when, in March, when the coronavirus happened and school went virtual and school still virtual, and I struggled at first getting used to what Zoom classrooms or Google classrooms were like, that's okay. And we want you to know we're looking at all four years, we're able to have those conversations with you and that you should utilize the application space to tell your story. So personal statements, essays, additional information, both the Randolph Macon application and the um, Common App give space for you to tell those stories. And so if something has happened, um, we want to know. But using the space, additional spaces, for us to get to know you better so we can put faces to names and stories to names and be able to really resonate with your application and for you to differentiate yourself. Uh, the best piece of advice I can give you, and, and I'm stealing it from a friend of mine and a colleague of many years, he said, if you dropped your essay um, in the hallway of your high school, if someone picked it up, would they be able to give it back to you because it is so distinctly you, or could they give it to absolutely anybody in the high school or put 50% even of the students' names in that high school on that essay because it's so generic? So, so please think about that as you go to create your essays and your personal statements. Um, your letters of recommendation, we require one. Um, we, will, you, we will accept up to three. And so these are ways for us to learn more about you in the classroom, uh, more about you in the choir, more about you on the athletic field um, or the show choir or at your job or whatever you may be doing. Um, and I do understand that that might look really different right now. And so that's okay too, but please let us know. And so we're trying to get a bigger picture of who you are in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And so that goes into your extracurricular involvements. And so you're able to put these on your application. There's plenty of space to do so. And we really want to be sure that you have passion and purpose. So quality 
um, not quantity. And so this is being recorded. I know that I have said it at this point. So you can't go to, you know, fill out like 40 different clubs and organizations that you just joined randomly in your senior year because the director of admissions at Randolph-Macon said, I needed additional extracurricular activities to differentiate myself. So that's not what I'm saying. We really want you to just have great passion for what you do um, and, and do it well. So if that's community service or, or athletic teams or you're taking care of a sibling at home, you have home responsibilities, all of that counts. So please make sure you put that as your extracurricular involvement. Um, the other thing is if you are taking uh, post-secondary courses, so college courses in high school or if you are a transfer, we want your college transcripts and for multiple institutions should you have attended them. Randolph-Macon went test optional this year, as have a lot of institutions across the country. And so it is optional for you to send your SAT or ACT score into us. We will do whatever you tell us to do. So if you have had the ability to take the test and you want us to read your application with the test, we will absolutely do that. If you've taken the test and you don't want us to read your application with the test, we'll do that too. Uh, if you have not had the ability to take the test and you say, nope, I'm going to submit it, I can't do that, that's great as well. Whatever you tell us, we will abide by. And so we will make sure to look at your application and all of the additional materials without the test. The other optional suggestion that I have, there have been students uh, who have asked about it through the Q&A and in the chat tonight um, about interviewing. Um, I really would like to apply to Randolph-Macon. I think it's important for me to interview. I think this year of all of the years, it is great to have a conversation and it doesn't have to be as formal as you think. Um, we would love to do interviews with you, but you can also just have a conversation with your admission counselor. And so tonight on our website, as Faith showed earlier, you have an admission counselor who is your territory manager they know your school, they know schools around you, and they want to get to know you and read your application. So have that conversation with them, especially if you think something's sticking out on your transcript or in your app that you really want to, like, I would like to explain this a little bit more. Go ahead and reach out to us. Um, we're happy to throw the link up at the end of this conversation so that you can schedule those meetings, but also at eight o'clock tonight, we are all online. So come and chat with us because we would love to get to know you a little bit better. Um, do the same. Yeah, I, I think Aaron covered all the items really well. Um, and with several of them, you know, we, we gave the uh, caveat or the understanding that, you know, this, this year's different. Last year was different. Yeah. Um, and I guess the question I've gotten most from parents and from students, um, whether it's related to testing or pass fail classes, is that, look, the good thing is that almost every one of you has experienced some disruption. So it's not like you're the only one, right? Um, and we're working with a lot of different students from a lot of different places, and you all have a similar challenge. And, and we understand that, we appreciate that. You know, we made a, have made a lot of adjustments for students here at Randolph-Macon. I think Dean Asdell can speak to that. Um, and so I, I think if, you know, what I say is we're, we're very empathetic for the situation and, and, you know, we're going to try to put you as we work with you for the admissions process in that context. Um, I guess the, along that lines is, is that, you know, you've met challenge and, you know, one of the best predictors of success in college is the ability to overcome challenge. The degree to which you can demonstrate that and communicate that, you know, that's, um, uh, you know, that's a, a, a real, uh, it's an opportunity. Um, and, and David, I'm actually going to move to the next slide and you can, you're hitting everything. So take it away. Yeah. So, you know, we're going to, um, as Aaron said, we're going to do a holistic read of an application. And what that just means is that we're looking at everything. And, and so there's not a potential, you know, particular score um, that we're, we're grading you on every little factor. We're looking at everything and we're trying to put you within the context of your school. Um, you know, so it's, uh, you know, we're, we, we also just want to be flexible um, to, to, to work with you and understand your challenge and the ability which you can communicate that to us, um, you know, it, it's, it's helpful. 
is helpful because each school is dealing with it somewhat differently. Um, you know, we're going to see, we're already seeing a lot of different transcripts. Um, and so uh, your counselors and most schools do a good job of sending along notes to help us, um, you know, understand the transcripts. So, but, but you know, you can add um, your commentary as well. Um, we understand that uh, testing, you know, that's why we went test optional. Many of you hadn't had a chance to sit for it. Some of you have signed up to try to do it and you haven't um, you know, been able to do that yet. Um, and you may not be able to do that. Just the, the supply chain for uh, uh, SAT, ACT in terms of being able to sit for it, that's okay. Um, and, and that's why we're test optional and it really does not matter to us if you submit or not. Um, so, you know, yes, we're gonna to try to put you in that context and understand what um, your, your situation, and, and believe me, we are looking for reasons to admit you, all right? We're not looking for reasons um, to, to deny you. So, you know, show us those reasons, help us understand your situation. Uh, the more you can kind of uh, uh, help us understand your narrative, your story. Uh, it's not just about the numbers. Um, and so, you know, that's what, in, in, in this case, you know, with test optional, there's one less number. So we're gonna put more emphasis on your story, probably more emphasis on your high school record. Um, and and, and for, for some of you, I think hopefully that's a, that's a good thing. Um, so, so Aaron, is there anything you wanna kind of add to that for this COVID situation we're dealing with? <laughs> this COVID situation, yeah. Um, the line I put at the bottom, um, I know that I don't need to put it in writing. I, I hope that you all really do find this out, but I was reading an article today, uh, a vice president for enrollment said, we, what information you can give us, we want to be able to have and to digest. And so my advice to you is the information that you have, please just give it to us, be open with us, and we will be flexible with you and, and continue to control what you can, but that we know that there is so much that, that you cannot, and, and that's okay. And so we're going to be flexible, and we really are here to help you in, in any way that you can, in any way that we can. And so if that's having a counselor conversation, if that's, I can't get this from this transcript in on time, but I really want to apply early action, can, can you help me? Uh, keep us in the loop. Make sure that you're keeping open lines of communication and we will absolutely be available to you. So, um, yeah, with that the only thing I'll, I'll add to that is that, you know, understand that, that um, as Faith covered in the opening, mm -hmm. you know, we're, you know, 15, 50, 1600 students, okay? Our applicant pool, because of our size, and we, we want to be this size, um, we can treat you as an individual. We're not so overwhelmed that you're a number here. We have a, a, a really proud of our admission staff and, and I, you should use them as a resource. And we're at a size and scale where you can do that. Um, and so I just encourage you to, um, to take advantage of that as it, as it relates to applying to Randolph-Macon. And again, as we said earlier, we really wanted to bring our Dean of Students on here to talk a little bit of yes, Application, yes, you get admitted and you hopefully come to our campus. Um, it's just a really great place. Um, and it is still a really good place right now to this day. And it's because of all of the hard work that our faculty, our staff, um, students are, are doing. They, they are truly putting in the work during this pandemic. And I want um, Dr. Adsdale to come and talk a little bit about that with you all. So, message from our Dean of Students. Yeah, and it's a live message at that. So welcome to everyone here this evening. And I think it's a great segue that Dean was saying, mentioned that our admission staff wants to treat you like a person and not a number, because that's exactly how we treat you on this campus. Uh, it's an important part of who we are uh, at Randolph-Macon that we treat the students as part of our family. And that's exactly what we're really getting a test of our family right now. Uh, COVID has thrown a wrench in just about everything, everywhere, uh, and we are not immune to that. But I will tell you, the students came back to campus this fall uh, in a staggered way uh, for move-in. They were uh, really great about it. 
especially our new freshmen, who we wanted to give an opportunity to, to really relate to each other and to build those relationships before upper class students started coming back to the campus. And so they were able to do that. And I think that provided us with a really good start to the fall. Um, and knocking on wood here, our numbers uh, of COVID cases on the campus are, are down extremely. <laughs> And that is a fantastic thing. And it's due in no small part to that community that I spoke of and to people doing the right thing. Uh, obviously, if we were all in the same room, we'd be wearing masks. Uh, we would be socially distanced. We would do what we need to do. Uh, but that hasn't stopped us from doing what we do here on campus to make this a special place. And I think that's an important piece of um, for you all to hear uh, today. Your high schools have been uh, obviously disrupted to, to different levels, uh, both in the spring and now this year. And um, that's a little disconcerting, and I know that that is. Our students, by and large, told us, uh, I'm tired of living at home. <laughs> I want to go, I want to come back to school. But we had no trouble getting our students back to school. And in fact, we were pretty much oversubscribed the first couple weeks that we were here. Uh, we had to ask some students to just sort of decide whether or not they could uh, commute in instead just to give us a little bit more social distancing but by way of a uh, by way of introduction uh thank you um to to aaron for introducing me but i it, one of the things that is helpful for you to know especially if you have questions later on are the areas that i'm responsible for and that is basically uh, all the student experience stuff that you can think of outside the classroom except for athletics so varsity athletics are not under our area but intramurals are uh, we have the Edge Career Center under our area, Counseling Center, uh, the Health Center is under our area, all wellness, intramurals, recreation, physical ed programs, those are all under uh, student affairs, as is residence life, student life, Greek life, uh, campus safety and security, and all of our campus ministries. Those are all under uh, our area. Also under our area is our eSports program, uh, our pep band, show choir, cheer and dance uh, and our equestrian program if you can see behind dean lathane uh, there in his office that is a saddle and yes he does ride uh, as does both his daughters and his spouse is the director of our equestrian program so we have over 70 staff in student affairs that work together to create opportunities for students to be involved it's the big deal uh, Aaron said, you know, don't put a bunch of activities on your resume just to put the activities on your resume. We want to know what you love to do. We have over 100 student organizations on this campus. That doesn't mean we expect you to be part of five of them or 10 of them. We expect you to do something and do it because A, you love to do it, and B, because you want to make a difference, and C, you want to try to exercise some leadership opportunities that might be available to you in that organization. And that doesn't mean being the president of an organization. It means being a leader within that organization. They're not the same thing. So it's important for you to understand that the campus community itself, uh, as Aaron has mentioned, as Dean Lassane has mentioned, having some truth and honesty in your application goes a long way here because that truth and honesty translates into what we are as a community and the ways that we relate to one another, uh, students, faculty, and staff. Uh, I think the Randolph-Macon College family speaks for itself, and certainly during COVID, uh, it's been strange, but we've really come up with some out-of-the-box uh, reasons to be involved and to help our students be involved on campus. I came across campus this evening. They were getting ready and set up with an outdoor movie. Uh, there were groups on the um, day field, uh, football field, the turf field. They were uh, playing hacky sack and, and throwing balls around and things. People are just finding ways to be involved and to safely interact with one another. Um, that, that's truly keeping us, uh, I think, at, in a good place, uh, emotionally, mentally, as we go through these sort of lockdown moments. Um, that's hard, uh, it's very difficult. And one of the things we wanna try to do with our students is to get them into some sort of normalcy. Um, harder for our seniors, juniors, and sophomores who've experienced what it's like to be here as a student pre-COVID. Uh, but also hard for our freshmen who have come in uh, from their high school experience where they ended in a COVID uh, environment, uh, but they're definitely relishing in the fact that they get to be here on campus with their peers uh, and be able to be interactive with them in the, in the many ways that our student life, Greek life, our folks are reaching out to uh, the student body as a whole. So it will be a little different for a little bit while longer. Um, hopefully we're, we're going to move towards the end of this and we're not going to have 
uh, these kinds of restrictions anymore, but we are pretty good at adapting, and I think we've done a fantastic job doing so, and our students, uh, by and large, are telling us that, too. Uh, they appreciate being safe, they appreciate being happy, and they appreciate being able to be college students. So, Erin, I'll toss it back to you, and if we've got other questions or things that come up, I'm happy to answer those. Perfect. Thank you so much, Yeah, yeah I'll just, um, you know, as that relates to uh, considering colleges, um, you know, we are, we, we do, we are open for visitors. Um, we, we, of course, we've adapted um, to that, just like uh, we've adapted to the way we, we deal every day and, and keep our students safe. Um, and so the, you'll, you'll see our visit protocols if you um, decide to come to visit. It's just, you know, kind of like the reason we're not all together here for an open house, um, we're kind of doing it one family at a time. And so we have multiple times through the day and we have uh, protocols and procedures that, that uh, you need to do a little bit in advance so we can uh, work with you safely and, and help you see the campus. We're not, fortunately, we don't go into buildings. Um, again, we're trying to keep our students safe as well as keep you safe when you visit, but, but we do encourage you to come visit. If you want to monitor how we're doing, um, we're, we, from the start of this, we've been very transparent. Uh, protect the high site. It's uh, right on our homepage, um, which lists um, our dashboard. Proud to say, um, Richmond Times Dispatch just uh, last weekend published an article, and, and I'm, I'm glad to be last in the state of Virginia um, <laughs> in one category, and that's and that's number of uh, cumulative COVID cases. So, um, uh, Grant uh, Dean Asdell is is. Uh, you know, and, and our, our teams and, and planning groups who put together, we adapted our curriculum, um, our, our academic calendar. Um, you know, we, there's been a lot of adaptation to our number one goal, which was to keep students safe. Our number two goal was to deliver a transformational educational experience. And so uh, we always keep that first goal primary, but um, I'm really proud of how we've done that, and how we have. Um, kept students safe and, and kept our faculty and staff safe. Um, we want to do the same thing to our visitors. So uh, it's it's been a, a team effort. I'm knocking on woods. We're, we're not out of the, uh, the the woods yet. We we're not going to let our guard down. But um, but I think we really have um, done that about as well as any school that I'm that I'm aware of. And our size and scale certainly help us with that. But it's also our people and our commitment. Um, in, in leadership. So, um, you know, we'd love for you to experience that, but you're gonna have to do that on our terms. Um, and, uh, and we're gonna be you know, consistent uh, with, with that. Um, Thank you. Um, so I wanna remind you time, you have a really amazing presentation next, and that is on financial aid with our director of financial aid. Um, she's amazing. I hope that you stay on and enjoy, but for now, we're going to take a little bit of a, a pause so that you can go and grab something to eat, um, grab something to drink, and we look forward to seeing you back in just a few minutes. So um, if you have additional questions, though, as the evening goes on, please feel free to throw those in the Q&A, and we truly look forward to reviewing your application, and we're just so excited to get to know you. So best of luck, and thanks again for being here. Thanks guys. We'll, we'll take your questions in the Q&A over the break too.